economy and traditional biochar has been used as an eco-friendly material for soil improvement and CO2 uh, emission reduction by carbon fixation and currently biochar has been widely used to uh, absorb uh, pollutants from wastewater or waste and the biochar can be used to absorb uh, very important nutrient components like phosphorus and nitrogen. And when they are absorbed, the biochar can be used as a fertilizer. And the important thing in uh, agricultural soil, the nutrients should be uh, controllable. I mean, fast. Uh, dissolution of fertilizer may uh, sometimes uh, make some problem like uh, eutrophication and we like uh, environmentally friendly fertilizers and we want some fertilizers with slow, slowly releasing uh, phosphorus and nitrogen components from biochar. We have some very important key factors for the successful uh, biochar for uh, phosphorus and nitrogen absorbent and fertilizer. And the waste bi biochar is produced from the pyrolysis of biomass, and the biomass should be very abundant and easy to obtain in both in quantity and quality. And they should have very uh, they should have very low cost for collection. Secondary uh, nutrient absorption and desorption rate and their capacity is very important as a characteristics of uh, potential fertilizer. For absorption, the when the rate is very fast, it's good, but when in terms of desorption, uh, it depends on the specific crops. Some crops may need uh, fast dissociation of the nutrients, and some crops, they need some kind of slow releasing uh, characteristics. And in order to increase the capacity of uh, phosphorus and nitrogen absorption, we use uh, surface modification for the enhanced absorption. Sometimes we call it uh, engineered biochar for the surface modified biochar. And after the absorption, the bioavailability of absorbed nutrient is very important. The bioavailability means uh, what extent the crops can utilize the nutrients. If the bioavailability is very low, it has a very low uh, fertilizer values because the nutrients cannot be easily utilized. So high bioavailability is uh, better than uh, low bioavailability. And we need to design uh, biochar depending on the specific crops we grow because the fertilizer characteristics are different from crop to crop. So we need to decide what kind of metals for the surface modification and 
you need to design their desorption rate. And from our experience, uh, biopsia has been studied very extensively, but the experience on the best production and uh, best application of biochar is quite rare. So for the commercial uh, commercialized commercialization, I think the experience of scale is very important. Our research objectives of uh, biochar is to develop uh, metal impregnate biochar from waste biomass. Uh, in our group, we used uh, some kind of biomass like uh, Korean pine cone residue and ground coffee waste and palm tree trunk. For phosphorus and nitrogen removal and slow release fertilizer. Specifically, uh, we like to check and compare the characteristics of biochar impregnated with different biomass and different metals. Uh, we have been used magnesium oh, sorry, <coughs> and calcium and aluminum. These uh, metals are quite widely used for the surface uh, modification. And secondly, to investigate phosphorus and nitrogen absorption of the biochar. With uh, biochar to absorb phosphorus and uh, biochar absorb phosphorus and nitrogen simultaneously. And finally, to investigate phosphorus bioavailability of the biochar for slow release fertilizer. So waste biomass uh, we use in this study is KPCR, Korean pine cone residue, uh, which is uh, we extract dirt from the Korean pine and the residue is uh, a waste. And we also use ground coffee waste, F coffee extraction, and <coughs> palm tree trim trunk have also been used for the uh, production of biochar. Uh, this slide uh, briefly show how to prepare biochar for uh, phosphorus uh, absorption. The biomass is crushed, crushed to a uh, small particle. Usually we uh, have a size of about one millimeter in diameter and the biomass, uh, the crushed biomass is impregnated with uh, metals like uh, magnesium or calcium or aluminum. And the biomass is dried and pyrolyzed to produce biochar with metals on the surface and they use, uh, they are used for phosphate absorption and after the, after the, uh, the saturation, then we use the saturated biochar for the desorption to check the dissociation rate of phosphorus from the biochar. So absorption, uh, phosphorus absorption uh, kinetics and isosomes were performed with uh, some different phosphorus concentration solutions for 48 hours at pH 8 and at the room temperature. And we compared the result data with some uh, kinetic models like so the first order and second order models and the isosome models with a Langmuir and frontally the second uh, biochar is to absorb phosphorus and nitrogen 
simultaneously with uh, magnesium impregnated biochar. This uh, is the same, we use the same procedure with the previous uh, phosphorus biochar. In this case, we use the uh, phosphorus and nitrogen component from uh, sewage sludge ash and from food wastewater. So it's sludge ash is we have an incinerator to uh, incinerate a sludge ash, the sludge, and we have we can collect sludge ash which has high high phosphorus content, about ten percent of the ash is phosphorus, and the food waste water has quite high ammonium concentration from thousands to uh, 5,000 nitrogen per milligram. So the phosphorus uh, from the sludge ash and ammonium from food waste water was combined with the magnesium impregnated biochar uh, to have both phosphorus and nitrogen. And we characterize the absorbed phosphorus and nitrogen absorbed magnesium biochar with some spectroscopic method. Uh, this is the same uh, figure photograph of KPCR biochar uh, before phosphorus adsorption and after phosphorus adsorption. We have a quite low phosphorus content uh, before phosphorus adsorption and it's quite increased after phosphorus adsorption. Most of the pump elements are carbon, oxygen, and magnesium. And the C and D is, uh, this A and B is magnesium impregnated biochar and C and D is uh, calcium impregnated biochar. So they have uh, high calcium content and phosphorus content was uh, 0.23 before adsorption and after adsorption is about 0.7. So the phosphorus content was increased from the same EDS. It show, uh, this graph shows the phosphorus adsorption kinetics with uh, magnesium and calcium impregnated biochar. So figure A shows the uh, adsorption rate based on gram biochar. So magnesium impregnated biochar absorbs about 25 milligram phosphorus and calcium biochar absorb about 15 milligram phosphorus per gram biochar. Uh, figure B shows the uh, phosphorus absorbed amount based on the impregnated metal. So uh, based on magnesium uh, phosphorus absorbed amount was about 250 milligram and based on calcium gram phosphorus uh, absorption was something like uh, 125. So this shows that uh, magnesium is a uh, better absorbent for phosphorus. And we, we compared with uh, aluminum with the same uh, uh, biomass and the uh, absorbed, absorbed phosphorus amount was uh, a little bit lower than magnesium and uh, calcium. We used a different source of aluminum and aluminum chloride, aluminum sulfate, and in this case, aluminum was extracted from water sludge. So the sludge from water work, they have uh, high aluminum 
in the floods because uh, they use uh, aluminum as a uh, flocula to remove suspended solids. And aluminum sulfate shows very high, sorry, about uh, <clears throat> 10 milligram phosphorus absorption, but aluminum chloride gives high to low, about two to three milligram phosphorus absorption. And this is the result from uh, ground coffee waste and magnesium also shows quite high phosphorus absorption than other metals. In this case, uh, iron is used for comparison. And aluminum and calcium. Aluminum shows uh, better absorption than calcium. It's uh, isosomes of uh, magnesium and calcium impregnated biochar. And this also shows that magnesium gave better results than calcium biochar. So once again, we can confirm that magnesium is much better than uh, calcium impregnation. Aluminum also gives similar results. Aluminum chloride gave uh, the best phosphorus absorption, but aluminum sulfate. Uh, aluminum sulfate is best, best, but aluminum chloride gives very low absorption. And it shows the efficiency <coughs> of uh, magnesium biochar and calcium biochar, and their uh, dosage effect. Magnesium, in case of magnesium, two gram per liter dosage is enough to absorb about uh, more than 95% of phosphorus. But when we use calcium biochar, we need uh, more than 10 gram per liter to obtain about 90% of phosphorus absorption. So in, in terms of phosphorus, phosphorus removal, uh, magnesium biochar gives uh, better performance than calcium biochar. It's uh, on the effect of competitive anions. When they have bicarbonate, it gives uh, quite uh, heavy inhibition on uh, phosphorus absorption. Other anions like nitrate, chloride, sulfate, they are about uh, 70% or 8% of the control uh, absorption, but bio, uh, bicarbonate gives uh, very severe inhibition. Okay, and we compared uh, bio availability with uh, different methods. And in this case, calcium biochar gave the highest uh, bio phosphorus bioavailability. And uh, magnesium biochar follows the second, and aluminum biochar gives the least bioavailability. So in terms of bioavailability, calcium and magnesium should be used for the fertilizer. Right, um, uh, this shows that we have uh, evidence to have struvite formation from the simultaneous uh, and simultaneous phosphorus and nitrogen absorption on biochar, and we have uh, we suggest some absorption mechanisms like uh, surface absorption and precipitation and cation exchange and electrostatic reaction together. Yes. And in summary, the data shows that magnesium and calcium was quite effective in phosphorus uh, absorption. And the absorption capacity depends on metal bio uh, the kinds of metals and biomass used. And for case of KPCR, it's uh, something like 24 
milligram for blood absorption, and in puppy case, magnesium biochar absorbs something like 43 milligrams per liter. So phosphorus desorption depends on metals used and is directly related to metal dissociation from biochar. And phosphorus bioavailability heavily depends on the kinds of metal used and the pH. And finally, the main mechanism or absorption and precipitation for phosphorus and ammonium removal and cation exchange also contributes to remove ammonium for the steel bites. Some other phosphorus uh, were recovered as magnesium phosphate and calcium uh, phosphate other than uh, steel bites. And Biomass and metal biochar should be carefully selected to control phosphorus release. Correct phosphorus release depending on the crop. So that's my talk. And thank you very much. So maybe you can have uh, one or two questions. So with regard to the priming of the biochar with the magnesium or calcium, yeah. would you suggest dolomite as the source to prime the biochar? Uh, well, in terms of uh, elements, magnesium gave uh, better performance than calcium. And the source of magnesium depends on the situation, the local situation, I think. Well, that is such as dolomite, maybe, but, yes. but uh, some other uh, cases, like if you have a reverse osmosis plant, uh, separate water from seawater, you have quite enriched magnesium in the, uh, from the osmosis plant. So that is also a chance to reduce life. That's in the form of magnesium chloride, or? Uh, well, in case of magnesium chloride, you need to buy it. Yeah. They are not in nature. So. Okay, any other question? One more question. So, did you check the P release rate? Say, so what is the rate at which the P releases uh, of the, the uh, uh, impregnation? Here, phosphorus release. Yeah, phosphorus release. You, you ask what is the important factor or? Uh, the, the rate of release, you know, what's, uh, what's the rate of release? You know, when you, uh, you're saying that that could be used for crops. Yes. Uh, so what's the rate of release? So it's a slow release or? Yeah, possibly what can be very quickly from the biochar or? I, I didn't show uh, in detail. It heavily depends on the pH. So the soil pH is, gives a uh, very important effect on the dissolution. In, when we use uh, distilled water, distilled water is quite a neutral pH. The dissociation is uh, very low, something like 12% or 14%. But when we use uh, citric acid to adjust the pH uh, 2.5 is it gives very uh, high distillation of phosphorus. In this case, uh, it's uh, aluminum bio aluminum uh, biochar. They uh, rarely dissociate uh, less than five percent in neutral pH. But when the pH decreases to 2.5, more than 60%, about 60% of phosphorus is released. So the pH, it depends on the pH. So you need to have acidic conditions. Yes, in mostly in acidic conditions, this so dissolution is faster than neutral or ammonium uh, alkaline conditions. So it's good around the rises here where you've got that high pH around the root system. And that's where struvite dissolves under citric acid. That's probably why you're getting that phosphorus release because of the 
you'll get it at the rise to be at the, the root zone, which is good. <laughs> okay, thank you very much indeed. Just some time. Uh, thank you, Professor, very much. Uh, we have a small clap for our keynote speaker. Thank you.